Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. I'm up in the shack and today we've got something very, very special to show you. This was sent in by Banggood for review. It's a Malahi V4, 500 hertz to two gigahertz software defined radio receiver. This is gonna be a full length in-depth review. In a moment, we'll look at the external controls and the general quality of the casing on the radio. Then we'll go into the software. There's a lot to get through there. It's got an amazing array of controls. And then finally, we'll do some radio testing with the supplied telescopic whip antenna. And then I shall connect it to my external CB antenna and then we'll see what we can pick up. Now, I could do an unboxing part of the video, but it would be extremely short because this is pretty much what you get in the box. You get the radio itself, it's nicely packed, and all you get is a telescopic SMA connector there on a telescopic whip antenna. It's quite a nice telescopic whip antenna as far as they go. It's pretty long. I would say it's about 50 or 60 centimetres long. And that's fine. That gets you the FM radio broadcast stations. It does have RDS as well on the radio. Um, yeah, it'll do medium wave. And also some of the stronger shortwave broadcast radio stations. But that's about all you get in the box. You don't get a charge with any shortwave radio. To get the best out of it, you're going to need some kind of external antenna. You have a SMA connector on top of the unit here so dead easy to connect outside antennas even a, a long wire something you might stretch down your garden we absolutely fine for a short way available cheap on ebay are these little adapters here this is a 259 to an sma connector that will screw straight in the top my coax in the shed shack for example is rg213 that's a little bit stiff to connect straight onto the radio that'll put a lot of strain on that connector there so i made myself up a little sma patch lead here going into a 259 plug and that will allow me to connect to my external cb antenna these malahi radios They've been out a good couple of years now, maybe slightly longer. I've been looking at them. Some of the early examples, the version one, version two, um, they, I wasn't all that impressed with the casework. Quite often they were just two circuit boards sandwiched together. This version four we've got here with the stereo speakers. Yeah, I really do like this. It's a very nice solid aluminium or aluminium if you like case. Really is nicely made. Also, Pleased to say when I shake it, there's no rattles, no loose screws, no battery inside knocking about. No, it does seem to be very nicely made. Three and a half inch touchscreen. Again, it's a very, very clear screen. No dead pixels, anything like that. Now it is touchscreen. It does come with a screen protector. Personally, I, I can't stand fingerprints on screen, so I, I tend to use one of these little rubber doobies on the end of a pen. And it's, pretty, it's fairly responsive. It is fairly responsive. It, sometimes it needs a bit of a double push there. But uh, yeah, overall, it's fairly responsive. So let's have a quick look around the controls and then we can get into the software. On the side of the radio, the top rotary encoder is a volume control. This also pushes in and is a switch and this activates and selects certain aspects of the software. Below that is the main tuning wheel, the VFO if you like. This is also a multi-function encoder and pushing this in changes the step rate and also activates further features on the software. The main on off switch, which turns off the power from the internal lithium ion battery. There is a second push switch, which is labelled power, but this is not a power off switch. In fact, all I find that this does is switch the screen display on and off. Then we have a simple 3.5mm stereo jack for headphones or external speakers. USB C socket for charging up the built-in lithium ion battery worth noting that you do not unfortunately get a charge cable in the box you have to supply your own this socket is also used for connecting to a pc for future software upgrades and enhancements also supports pc iq audio output and this is quite useful because it means you can use software to remotely control the radio i do believe there is a kenwood software package that works with this radio but i didn't get a chance to test that 
And then finally, on the bottom, just a very simple green LED charge light. On top of the radio, we find a female 50 ohm SMA antenna connector. When it comes to tuning the radio, you've got a couple of options. You've got a direct frequency input, which is quite useful. If you know the frequency you want to go to, you just tap on the frequency readout there. You've got a keyboard comes up, typing the frequency you want, and away you go. If you want to do manual tune, there is the encoder on the side there. It is a clicky encoder. It uh, clicks round. It doesn't seem to miss any steps, which is quite good. I probably would have preferred a smooth linear VFO myself, but it's absolutely fine. If you want to change the step rate, which I'm sure you will, just press that once, then it comes up and you can adjust that as high or low as you want. It will go down to 0 0.025, which is pretty useful. That's almost like a BFO clarifier, to be honest. And I think for most circumstances on sh sort of shortwave, upper sideband, things like that, yeah, that's absolutely, absolutely fine. But I say, uh, yeah, I would have preferred it if it's smooth. But it's good. It works. It does the job. Right, we're going to have a little listen at the built-in stereo speakers. It is stereo on wide FM. I'll connect an external microphone. We'll have a listen to that. And then I shall connect the radio directly into the mic feed on the camera. We can hear how it sounds directly. It does sound very, very nice on headphones. It's time we're off to Dudley in the West Midlands and there uh, it's Martin Sheehan. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Ken. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, are you? Yeah, terrific, thank you. So, are you working today? Yes, I'm in Birmingham today, Ken. All yeah. right, what's the job? It's a carpenter, new build. Oh, working on a new build, right. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, it's a block of apartments, so it's uh, a lot of... Students. The 1972 number one, Schools Out, was the debut hit for which chart act? Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper, three points. What sort of town did Lips Inc. sing about on the group's top three hit in 1980? Funky Town. Funky Town, <coughs> yes. OK, bonus question. Same title, different song. Paul McCartney had a hit song in 1980 that shared its title with a TLC single from 1995. In this part of the video, we'll go through some of the menu options that's in the software. If you want to skip this and go straight to the testing, I'll put a little time link pop up on the top of the screen now. Menu is called hard for some reason. This is just really the main software settings. As you can see, there is quite a lot. I won't go through every feature. I'll just pick out some of the main ones. Starting on the top left, we have ENC Reverse. This simply changes the function of the two rotary encoders on the side of the radio. IQ Swap, we won't go into. Then we have v bat Control. Here you can set a voltage where you would like the radio to automatically switch itself off, thus saving the battery. Going back to the top again, you'll see SW antenna. Here you can switch between using the telescopic antenna or a 50 ohm external antenna. Preamp, on off, then the antennator control, set the level in dBs. Audio out, here you can choose whether you want to use the built in speaker, or speaker plus headphones, or just maybe headphones themselves. RF gain, Adjust internal RF gain. LNA, mix up GR. This is to use the built in UHF amp and you can disable it or set high or low gain. Gonna skip a couple now and go straight up to the top. And this is quite an important setting. This is the F correct. You may remember when I did a review on that small ATS20 receiver, some of the stations were very slightly off frequency. Well conveniently this radio has a setting for that. With this F correct function you can correct those frequency offsets and get things spot on. Likewise if you find the signal meter is inaccurate, well below that we have SM correct. This can manually adjust the offset of the signal meter. Bleep LVL, it's no surprise that just sets the level of the bleep. Skipping past PGA best, we're going on to the last column now. You'll see the first one at the top, 
IND type. This is for your signal meter. You can have a standard signal noise ratio meter, or if you prefer, you can set that so it displays in decibels. Activity timer is simply a sleep timer, so the radio switches itself off. And then finally, we've got the pre-gain value, which is set in decibels. Moving on to the audio settings, you'll see that each column is segregated for different functions. On the left hand side, NB column, this is all the settings for the noise blank, uh, things like the threshold, the trigger point, the uh, config point, and then to switch it on and off. Moving across, we have the AGC, the automatic gain control. Here we can set the limit in decibels, we can set the amount of gain. Also with the AC mode, we can set the speed, fast, medium, and slow. The middle column is mostly used for wide FM stereo. There's built-in equalization settings for the sound, pop, classic, and all that. You can switch the uh, WFM stereo, enable, disable, ANF, likewise, disable, enable, and pseudo stereo, wherever that is, you can switch that on and off as well. Moving across, we have the filter settings. The first setting at the top, filter, is just a generic wide or narrow. If you want to get a little bit more precise, you can set the low frequency and also the high frequency of the width. Last settings on this page over on the right is the squelch and noise reduction. SQL threshold, this is the trigger point where the squelch will come in. Squelch enabled, disabled. And then finally, NR threshold, this is the setting for the adaptive noise reduction. Moving on to the visual settings. First column on left hand side, you can set the maximum brightness and minimum brightness of the screen. Reduce time, this is when the screen will dim slightly to save your battery. And then there's a sleep time, which will turn the screen off altogether. Then we have the FFT settings. This is the spectrum analyzer part, the wavy line that sits above the waterfall on the main display. Here you can set the scale. Also set the FFT line color and pan percentage. This is quite an important one. This sets the division line between the waterfall and the spectrum part of the display. I found that I liked mine at about 50-50. Next, we have WTF. This is the waterfall delay. This sets the speed of the waterfall. And then below that, WTF gain. This increases and decreases the brightness of the waterfall. FFT fill simply fills in the spectrum part of the display with solid color. If you prefer the whole screen to be the waterfall, or maybe the whole screen to be the spectrum display, there's a setting for that on the top right hand there, view, pan, or waterfall. Moving back to the bottom buttons, NR, noise reduction, simply turns the noise reduction on or off. Then we have a mode screen which I didn't bother displaying. Pretty simple there, AM, FM, upper and lower sideband and CW. And then final setting is the band screen. Here you will find five pages of all the popular ham radio presets. Gonna take this down now into the shed shack. I'll be connecting it to my external antenna. That is an Antron 99 with a fire up upgrade kit. That's about 30 foot up in the air on the side of the house. Use my little patch lead. So we'll connect it on that. And then we'll have a little flick around. We'll do some uh, CB frequencies. We'll see if we can get some skip coming in. Do some local CB. And then I will have a little flick around the ham bands. The antenna's not really tuned down to the 40, 80 meter sort of ham bands. It's an 11 meter, 10 meter antenna. But it will still work. And uh, we'll have a little listen. I'll, I'll connect this directly into the camera. So it all sounds probably the best. Uh, likewise, I mean, it's got a 3000 mAh lithium ion battery in it. So it's sort of very that you're going to take portable you're probably going to use headphones anyway for some privacy and i think it sounds it's best whilst on headphones but anyway let's take this down into the shack and let's do some samples
Ask USL, USL, many sent for the information, the working, con uh, the city or city name. Okay, very happy for copy you, the contact number one for me when you station, my friend. Okay, 14 Sugar Delta 415, thank you so much for the contact, good day for you, good yes, uh, 14 Sugar Delta 415, 34 Sugar Delta 101 for the final, QSO. Yes, goes okay, my friend Mike, copy very good, 9 plus 10, 9 plus 10, radio super 5, beautiful signal in Canary Island, Mike. Okay, 26 Alpha Tango, 030, a 34, Sugar Delta, 101, give us all. Right, uh, right, zero sixty-one. You took that gimp mask off yet, or are you still about? Or are you still at my eating? Good morning, I am here. Oh, good, lovely. But it was getting sweaty in there, wasn't it? How are you, mate? I'm all good. I'm all good. I might jump in the shower. So, and I just said to Stan, if I disappear a bit quick, these because I've uh, had to run to the loading bay and all that lot. But uh, yeah, I'm all good. Woke up this morning again. Blah -de -blah -de -blah. Anyway, I'll give you a rundown. Well, you've probably been here weekend anyway. Amongst your chucky bickies, you've got Stanley Vanley, you've got Chris over there in where, and, uh, and I think I just heard uh, 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 a northern northern station coming in over. Well, I doubt if I hear the northern station, but I, uh, <coughs> I don't know whether you want to find out who it is before you disappear. You call them, I'm sure you'll get them. It's me. Oh, someone keyed up when I did there. Yeah, was there any other stations out there on the 305? Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Richard. How are you, mate? Fantastic this way. Normal radio service has been resumed, mate. So, Italy, Italy now, which is wrong? I'm going to show you the special code. Italy, Italy now, which is wrong? I'm going to show you the special code. Italy, Italy now, whiskey rum, tango shot, special call. Hotel Papa Whiskey, thank you, you're five nine. Thank you from uh, for Madrid. Thank you very much, you're in the wrong. Italy, 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 whiskey, radio, tango shot. Yes, SA2, PFO, einen schönen guten Nachmittag. Danke für den Anruf. Rapport gebe ich mal im nächsten Durchgang. Signal war aber relativ stark. Also mindestens 5,5 bis 5,7, sage ich mal, äh, vorab. Name hier Andreas und Standort ist 150 Kilometer südlich des Polarkreises, etwas mehr wie 700 Kilometer nördlich von Stockholm. Italien, Zulu 3, Quebec, Echo Uniform. Quebec? Zulu 3, Quebec, Echo Uniform. Roger, Roger, 5-9 for you near Venice. My name is Valerio. Your name, please? Ja, da war die Propagation ja sehr gut gewesen, die 80er Jahre. Ich weiß nicht, ob du das mitgemacht hast. Aber da konnte man, da konnte man mobil, mobil mit 100 und mit 90er Jahre, da ging es nochmal, aber nicht mehr so, wie das dort war. Und 20, 20 ja, wie ich eben, das, ich war ganz überrascht. Ja, dann ist ja, ist, ist ja nichts, nichts uh, Unmögliches. Podcast by searching World Today. Russian President Vladimir Putin and his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron remain far apart on the Russian-Ukraine conflict after discussing the issue in a first phone call since March. Kwa wale wote wanaozungumza lugha ya Kijerumani lakini pia hata kwa makundi mengine ya lugha mbalimbali amerudia kuwaomba wasari kwa mfano Nchini Poland tarehe 3 Mei wamefanya sikukuu ya Bikira Maria. And uh, said that proves. Uh -huh. The devil came as slick, I'm telling you, as a piece of ice or glass. He came up and said, uh, Well, um, Mrs. Eve, uh, God said, I'd like to talk with you about what the Lord has said. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that captured her confidence, didn't it? Had God said, what did he do? He raised a question about what God said. Right, we're back up in the shack. Now, I hope that came across on the video as well as that sounded on the headphones because the quality you can get out of this thing is absolutely awesome. It really is a nice bit of kit. I've been playing with this for about two and a half hours down in the shed shack and really, really impressed. Also, the battery life's pretty good as well. You, you can see that the battery is just starting to go about halfway down. Um, I reckon it should go well over three hours. And if you were taking this out on the road, just get yourself one of these little porter packs, you know, that, that plug in the plug in the side. So, yeah, conclusions, good points, bad points. Well, the receive is really, really good. I mean, it's also so easy to use, especially if you're used to shortwave listening, where you're twirling a lot of VFO knobs. It's so easy with the waterfall and the little spectrum display there. You, you just see a peak and you press on it simple as that and then I've just got the encoder here I've just got that tuned right down just to use it as a clarifier just to bring the stations in but yeah so so easy to use uh, the stereo speakers I think that they're okay maybe a little bit of a gimmick I, I think they might have been better just to have put maybe one big speaker um, they are a little bit thin when you turn up the volume but there again you've got a three and a half inch jack so you can just plug in a cheap CB speaker and that improves the sound immensely. Another thing that impressed me, and if you go back and look on those samples I just did, you'll notice that on some of them I've got the noise reduction feature on, and I found on the stronger stations that was a real boon. That knocked out all of the background hiss, all of the background noise. I did switch it off when we went up to 10 meters because those stations were a little bit weaker, and I did find they were suppressing some of the weaker signals but uh, yeah the noise reduction especially on the broadcast band absolutely fantastic when it comes down to the software now, i've been looking at these Malahite radios for well a couple of years now and some of the earlier versions have now been reduced in price so you know on the face of it they look quite a bargain compared to this version 4 but you have to be careful because when you read reviews on those you'll notice when you look at the software Part of this software is not active. They're either the little symbols aren't there or they're greyed out. And then what you have to do, you have to buy an additional activation code online, which then puts the price back up. This version four, I'm pleased to say that absolutely everything on the software here, absolutely everything is active. Uh, nothing is greyed out, everything. So this, this, this version four must be a fully registered piece of software. There's, there's no extra activation codes to buy straight out of the box everything works and i think that's about all i can say i mean in conclusion it is a great piece of kit i really really enjoyed playing with this it's sort of the radio that i would probably take on holiday so 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 compact just slip it in your pocket long wire and uh, away you go this came from banggood i will leave a direct link in the description if you want to go and check it out maybe think about purchasing one yourself i will also when i upload this video i'll ask banggood if they'll give freddie in the shed viewers a discount code they normally do if, if i get one i will put that also in the description if you are teetering on the edge of getting one of these sdr radios um that code will probably only be active for maybe two possibly three weeks and then it'll be deactive so uh, yeah don't hang about if you want to get that uh, extra discount just put it in the checkout box when you go to pay for the radio so that's about it stay tuned because as the skip starts to come into the uk i will be connecting this up to my antenna i'll be recording some more video 27 triple five things like that so you'll be seeing some more of this radio in action on the channel so make sure that you miss that and that's it just for me to say cheers there's the old thumb from fred thanks for sticking with the video please give the old thumbs back if you've enjoyed the video if it's been helpful to you i would appreciate that and finally please 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 stay safe look after each other and i'll catch you all on the next one cheers guys <laughs>